Somewhere on the planet, there exists a place where the laws of the sea are broken. Where ships, instead of cutting through waves, are slowly lifted above them, mustered by an invisible force. Mountains of steel weighing 160,000 tons are raised without engines or propellers, made prisoners of a gravity that forces them to climb and descend a corridor of fresh water carved through solid rock. Every year, over 14,000 of these giants pay a small fortune, hundreds of thousands of dollars, for the privilege of traversing this shortcut that spans a mere 80 kilometers. Even American nuclear submarines must surface into daylight to navigate its locks. But behind this ritual lie two enigmas that defy logic. How is it possible to lift the sea itself so that a colossus, weighing as much as a small city, can ascend as if floating up a watery step? And why do the world's most powerful shipping lines accept paying a toll that can exceed half a million dollars for a single transit? The answer lies in one of the boldest engineering feats in history. Welcome to the Panama Canal, a corridor that didn't just shorten continents, but rewrote the maps of the global economy. This is the untold story of its true impact, and why today it faces its greatest threat. For centuries, connecting the Atlantic and Pacific was an obsession. Ships departing from Europe had to sail around all of South America, confronting the infamous Cape Horn, a frontier where the ocean becomes a monster. There, the southern winds blow at over 200 kilometers per hour. Antarctic currents collide with the Pacific, and waves can rise more than 20 meters high. It's estimated that over 800 ships and 10,000 sailors lost their lives attempting to cross it. It was the most dangerous route on the planet. A tomb of wood and steel where geography dictated the rules. A journey that lasted for weeks, cost fortunes, and claimed countless lives. Until, in the late 19th century, a French engineer, Ferdinand de Lesseps, the very man who built the Suez Canal, arrived in Panama determined to repeat the feat. He planned to build a sea-level canal, a direct channel connecting two oceans without locks or elevation changes. But in Panama, this proved impossible due to the mountainous topography and torrential tropical rains. Here, nature would not yield to engineering. The jungle swallowed the machines, the rains triggered massive landslides, and tropical diseases decimated the workforce. 20,000 men died. The project collapsed in mud and fever. The dream seemed buried. That is, until the United States took it up with a radical idea. If they couldn't dig down to sea level, they would have to lift the ships over it. Instead of excavating a sea level channel, American engineers proposed a system of locks. Gigantic chambers that function as hydraulic elevators. Each ship enters, the massive gates close, and water flows by gravity from an artificial lake called Gatun, slowly lifting the vessel up to 26 meters above sea level. No pumps, no engines, just pure physics. Each lock complex is formed by three consecutive chambers. Those on the Atlantic side lift the ship up, those on the Pacific side lower it back down. It's the same design repeated in reverse. In total, a complete transit involves three ascents and three descents. A journey on watery steps. But before ascending, the ship must be perfectly aligned. The space between the concrete lock walls is so narrow that in some places there is less than a meter of clearance on each side. The slightest miscalculation could puncture the hull of a 300-meter-long vessel. This is where the mulas, or mules, enter the scene. These are steel locomotives that crawl along rail tracks on both sides of the lock walls. Each ship is guided by up to eight of these mules, which keep it perfectly centered using steel cables tensioned to a hair's breadth. While one mule pushes, another breaks. While one adjusts the angle, another balances the tension. The process is so precise that every meter of forward movement is calculated to prevent the ship's propellers from touching the walls or the water pressure from pushing the vessel off its axis. Once the vessel is perfectly aligned, the massive gates close behind it. Valves at the bottom of the lock chamber open. Water from Gatun Lake flows into the lower chamber, lifting the ship upwards. In just minutes, 80 million liters of water raise the vessel by 8 meters. This operation is repeated three times until the ship reaches the lake's level. Then, on the other side, the process is reversed. The locks are drained. 
The ship descends step by step and finally touches the sea again. The complete cycle lasts between 8 and 10 hours. For the captains, it's like flying between mountains of concrete. And here, something unique in the world happens. By law, they must relinquish command to a Panamanian pilot, a specialist who knows every meter of the canal. For the duration of that transit, the security of a piece of global commerce literally depends on their steady hand. But every miracle has a price. Crossing it isn't cheap. The average toll for a cargo ship is around $250,000. Though the largest vessels, the Neo Panamax class, can pay over half a million for a single transit. Why would anyone accept paying so much? The answer lies in time. Sailing around South America means an additional 15 days at sea, thousands of extra liters of fuel, and additional salaries for the entire crew. In that calculation, the canal always wins. It's the world's most expensive toll road and also the most profitable. Every year it generates over $3 billion in revenue contributing nearly 40% of Panama's GDP. Panama has no oil, but it possesses something more valuable. Control of a route that moves 6% of global trade. In 2016, Panama inaugurated its largest expansion yet. The Neo Panamax locks. Three times larger, they are capable of lifting ships carrying up to 14,000 containers. The project cost $5 billion and introduced rolling gates, automated sensors, and a water-saving basin system that recycles up to 60% of the water used. But the true enemy isn't engineering, it's the climate. The canal depends completely on the rains that feed Gatun Lake. In recent years, severe drought has brought its water level to historic lows. In 2024, daily traffic was slashed from 40 ships to just 27. Each lost day costs millions. And the threat is clear, without water, the canal dies. So, how is Panama preparing? Engineers are racing to develop solutions. Desalination projects, new reservoirs, and advanced water recirculation systems. The challenge is keeping a century-old infrastructure alive on a planet that's changing faster than anyone predicted. And every single drop counts. Without them, ships would be stranded, global commerce would slow to a crawl, and prices worldwide would skyrocket. There is one type of vessel that crosses the Panama Canal in a way fundamentally different from all others. Submarines. Designed as invisible shadows to operate in the depths, they must negate their very purpose and surface completely to navigate this corridor. Yes, even the nuclear giants of the United States Navy and Allied nations have passed through these locks, but never submerged. When they do, the canal transforms. From a commercial artery, it becomes a high security zone. The procedure is extraordinary. These silent colossi advance with their reactors aboard, escorted by a fleet of military tugs under the strict guidance of a Panamanian pilot who assumes total control. It is the only place on Earth where the commander of a nuclear submarine relinquishes the sovereignty of his vessel. The first submarine crossed shortly after the canal's inauguration in 1914. Over a century later, it remains one of the most unusual spectacles in modern maritime transit. A weapon designed to hide from the world, sailing in plain sight, climbing watery staircases just like any cargo ship. And so, Panamanian engineering forces even nuclear submarines to come into the light to traverse the feat that defied nature. The Panama Canal is proof that engineering can change geography, but it's also proof that nature always collects its due.